Welcome to Budget Innovation. My name is Vincent. This content is about work on a HiMac 580C 12 ton excavator. I was going to test some technology that I've added to the excavator that would make it better than any telehandler and also a better excavator emptying the bucket an extra 60% height. Um, but being an old excavator, it wouldn't start. So this content became about diagnosing water in the fuel tank and dealing with that and then modifying the excavator to prevent that from happening again, hopefully. Um, so enjoy the content. Please remember to share, like and subscribe to my email list. Thank you. So here's the HiMac 580C, manufactured sometime in the early 1970s. It's in need of a lot of maintenance and repair, but when modified with the new technology, it'll be a better excavator. For example, it will empty its bucket at an extra 50% height without the need for a thumb. Even more impressive, it will lift materials better than any telehandler on the market being able to lift a load between three to five tons and place it 40 feet in the air. And that's a 12 ton excavator. But it'll avoid the need for mobile cranes and concrete pumps. Now a 70 ton excavator should be able to lift 10 to 15 tons of load and raise it to a height of 60 feet, avoiding the need for some overhead cranes as well as mobile cranes and concrete pumps. That's pretty impressive. And just look at the rust in the cab. That's just incredible, isn't it? There's holes. There's holes in the walls. The floor's actually okay, but it's holed in several places. It'll be, it, it'll be tended to at some stage. At the moment, because the cab's been altered so much, there's no point in dealing with the rust. I'll deal with the rust at the end, but you can see it's pretty bad. Well, here we see the regulator sitting on some pipes. It's basically got it unattached. You can see where somebody used to connect it with connectors and so on. And, and there's the regulator off the machine, which I've actually highlighted. The, I've used a pen to highlight the, the, the writing so I can identify the part and, and work out the wiring. So here we see the engine from a, a plan view. This is the engine I need to start to test the new technology I fitted to this HiMac. It ran for brief periods only. There was a lot of smoke. It took a lot of turning on the starter motor from some very well charged batteries to get it to start at all. And then suddenly it stopped and would barely turn over and not even fire. I was concerned. I tested the batteries. The one terminal was loose. I knew it had broken anyway. I'd got a clamp on it to hold it on. Um, the terminal had partly melted away and was quite warm, probably because of the high load when trying to start the engine over time. Um, and with fully charged batteries and perhaps even a poor connection, uh, it overheated. It could also mean there was a problem with the starter motor, so I need to check check the starter motor, but I also need to let the batteries just cool down a little bit and settle down. We now the wiring on the HiMac was so bad that I decided to take it all off and rebuild the loom bit by bit. So I started off just putting back the essentials that I needed to start start the engine. In effect, I was hot wiring it. Um, it's a 24 volt system. I took it, I tested it and it seemed to be quite slow. Um, so I took it off anyway. I thought I'd have a look and test it off and it, it remained slow. It actually got prices on new ones and they weren't cheap. They were 500 euro and upwards each. That's crazy. So I decided to, uh, uh, persist for a while and um, 
I also noticed there's a chip tooth on the flywheel, so something had happened. It had stopped pretty suddenly and things had collided and snapped. That won't matter too much over time as long as I'm not look, unlucky enough to start the engine with the starter motor in exactly that one spot with a broken tooth for too long, otherwise it'll get worse and worse. So I'll see how I go. It's not urgent at the moment. I'll grease it and, and see what happens. Now here we see the HiMac from the side view and it shows the tank, the fuel tank. So I really need to check on the fuel. And I took the fuel out of the tank, I put it in a bottle and let it settle. And what do we see? We quite clearly see the diesel floating on top and the water on the bottom. So we've got water in the tank. There's no doubt about that. So we need to find out how it got in and prevent it happening again. With all this happening with the, the HiMac, it's enough to drive you to drink, really, isn't it? Now, there are some parallels here, except that the drink is homebrew, and it's froth floating on the, the, the beer rather than diesel floating on water, and it's far more satisfying. And there's plenty more where this came from. I've got a home brewery. It's all, it's all based on lots of stainless steel. So I moved on to, I knew there was water in the tank, I checked the sediment bowl on the high mac and sure enough it was frothy and blocked. I cleaned out the sludge from the sediment bowl and I noticed that the, the filter had pretty much disintegrated, the metal filter, so I replaced that. The only thing I had at the time was a Chinese manufactured tea strainer, so I repurposed that to give me a, a sediment filter for now and until I can try and find one for the future. I also noticed that the fuel filters themselves were blocked with a gunge. So we're heading for the fuel tank to take a look. Here's the cover plate on the fuel tank. It needs to be unbolted. They're pretty big bolts, I don't know what they are. And on taking the plate off the cover there, um, there's a couple that snapped. But you know, I'm not really worried because I'm going to re remove all those to because I decided that where the cap is bolted onto the body, there's a gasket there and water tends to collect around that gasket and that could be a possible place for water to creep into the tank. So my view was wells are far more secure than gaskets if they're done properly. They don't need maintenance. So if I could put a flange on there and raise that surface that the, the fuel cover bolts onto, then I'll have prevented water from getting in in the future. So here we go into the diesel fuel tank with a cheap endoscope camera. Immediately we see sludge. And there's lots of it. It looks like a hole, but it's not a hole. Anyway, it's a mess. That look like an outlet, not sure. It looks like a, a surface of a planet. There's big mounds of sludge, look at it. That looks like another hole, but I don't have any leaks from the tank, so I assume it's meant to be there, I don't know. I'll have to check it out at some stage, but let's deal with the sludge for now. There's a sender unit for the fuel tank level. Um, there's That's obviously the junction, the origin of the sender unit, the mount, we can see some gasket there. Oh well, we'll leave now. And we set up a vacuum to clean the sludge. So back into the tank with this endoscope. There's something cathartic about cleaning sludge. Look at it. Especially when there's mounds of it that disappear. I like to see the metal structure appear and the welds.
Anyway, I could not uh, get to some of the far reaches of the tank, such as under the battery box. So I, I got my hand gloved up and used a clean hand brush with some petrol and I swept the sludge around a bit and then moved it to an area where I could vacuum it clean away. Look at that. So you wouldn't want that getting into your engine. So there you get an idea of the cleaning operation in the tank. Consistent with budget innovation ideology, I needed to find a piece of steel um, knocking around that would serve the purposes of creating this flange to raise the cover on the fuel tank so that water is less likely to get in at that joint where there used to be a gasket. So I found a piece of rectangular hollow section. I only had this one length, so I thought, well, okay, I'll just slit it along its length. So I need to slit this rolled hollow section across its length. I approximate the center line from the one edge, draw a mark, and then approximate the center line from the opposite edge. And then you end up with two marks, and you know that the center line falls in the middle of those two marks. It's as simple as that, and I've, I use this quite a lot, such as if I want to slit a plywood board across its length, you can use this technique. So that's what I did, and then I slit the uh, hollow section using a, a bandsaw. It doesn't have to be perfect. Imperfection is all right. I think more in terms of what's the minimum I need to do that's fit for purpose. Here we see the completed raised flange for the fuel tank with the M8 nuts. You can just see the threads there. And it's ready now to be welded in place on the excavator. But before welding this new flange onto the HiMac, we need to bolt onto it the fuel cover plate to make sure that there's a good contact, a good seal, which won't then be disturbed when we weld. Because weld causes distortion. We bolt the cover plate onto the flange, prepare the metal on the HiMac ready for welding at the point of the flange, and then we weld it. And I altered the cover plate as well, pretty roughly, but never, never mind. I, I altered it to also then cover the padlock. We end up with a, a modified HiMac. So we've welded the flange in place on the HiMac. The weld has to be sealed. It has to be impervious to the, the ingress of water rather than be structurally strong but they tend to go hand in hand anyway a good weld is both a good sealant and also structurally strong it's the gaps in between welds that we want to avoid so that really just completes the job then we end up with a fuel cap that's more difficult to be broken into because the padlock's covered a padlock that lasts longer because it's protected from the weather by an extension of the the fuel cap cover Obviously, it all needs a bit of paint and the last bolt putting in there, according to the photo. But we've got a much better system. Hi, it's Vincent here again. Well, I'm glad we got that HiMac working. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please like and share the content. And subscribe to my email list so that I can keep you updated with future content. I can get to find out what it is that you're interested in and tailor the content accordingly. Also, it will allow me to notify you of any crowdfund campaigns. So as for your own projects, I say go do it and good luck. Bye for now.